you've ever spent any time camping or hiking in the last 20 years, you probably know the name Big Agnes. They've become kind of a household name when it comes to tents and sleep systems. Well, in 2022, Big Agnes decided to make a change to what they were doing, and they entered the backpack segmentation of the camping world. And as you would expect, they are some pretty sharp looking packs. They've got a full line of lightweight packs, everything from a 50 liter pack to a 20 liter day pack. And that completely intrigued me because as you guys know, I love my day packs. In their lightweight day pack category, Big Agnes actually introduced two backpacks as a product offering, the Ditch Rider 32 and the Impassable 20. As the names imply, the Ditch Rider is a 32 liter pack, the Impassable is a 20 liter pack. Both are made out of the same ripstop nylon material, super heavy duty yet lightweight, very durable and water resistant. Both packs have the same basic features. There are a few differences, but for the most part, both great options in backpacks. Now I know we're not supposed to be concerned with looks, but the reality is if a bag doesn't look good, I'm not gonna wanna spend a lot of money on it and I'm probably not gonna be apt to carry it all day long. So the first thing that I notice with the Impassable 20 is this is just a good looking backpack. The seams are stitched nicely. There's great waterproof zippers everywhere and the high stretch fabric makes it incredibly functional. Not to mention on the back panel, they do have a little bit of padding on the back and there is some breathability here. Not as much as you'd think, but on an afternoon hike, it's not too bad. Now the Impassable 20 retails for about $150, but one of the beauties of Big Agnes is they're always running sales. I picked this up just at the tail end of last winter for I think it was $75. They had one of their 50% off sales. And I can tell you, I've now had this thing in three different countries and about two dozen day hikes. And I can tell you, I've developed a love-hate relationship for the pack. There's some features that I absolutely love about it. Then there's a couple of items that were almost complete deal breakers. But before we get into the part that I don't like, let's go over some of the basic features that I think are fantastic. As I mentioned earlier, it's made out of a ripstop nylon. It's just a great heavy duty, durable fabric, not completely waterproof, but it does have a lot of high water resistance to it. There's a back panel, which has plenty of stretch where you can throw in a wet raincoat or any random gear that you want. The side pockets, there's a water bottle pocket on both sides. This, I've got a one liter water bottle in right now, but there's plenty of room for two water bottles or a liter and a half. I tend to carry my grail with me, so I don't need a lot of water bottles. On the other side, you've got a second pouch. There's some great loops on the bottom and some shock cords, which are perfect for carrying your trekking poles, or not to mention a whole bunch of additional loops that you can tie on any kind of gear you want. When you look at pockets, there are pockets galore on this bag. Right on top, you've got this great large pocket on top that I use for my headlamp and hand sanitizer and just random gear. There's a nice back pocket also with a waterproof zipper. And this is where I keep in my, my poop kit, but it's a huge mesh pocket. Plenty of extra space for any goodies that you want to pack. When you look at the straps themselves, the shoulder straps are nice and wide and they're stitched with an extra webbing so that they easily drape across your shoulders. They don't pull awkwardly throughout the day. There's a fantastic chest strap, which helps tie everything together and hold it a little bit snugger. And what I really love is the hip belt aspect. If you notice on the side of the hip belt here, it's got a double belt that comes across, easily hugs the hips. and doesn't cause any chafing or rubbing if you're out there with a heavy pack for a long day. So getting to the inside pocket, you've got access to this nice big full zip and there is so much capacity in here. Of course, I've got all my gear too. So I've got my clothes, towels, rain gear, food bag, emergency kit. I mean, it just goes on and on. There is so much space in this bag. It does come with a, a rain cover. 
I've never used it. I find if I'm going to be out on a rainy day, throw a garbage bag in there, and that's probably the best thing I'm going to ever use. But inside, there is a pocket for a water bladder. If you're into water bladders, it's great. You can hold up a full two liter water bladder, and then there's some entrance points where you can lace it through down onto your shoulder straps. There's also an internal pocket for all your keepsakes, get your keys, your money, whatever goodies that you just don't want to lose. Go nice and snugly inside, you know, keep them safe and sound. All in all, there is more space in this bag than you're ever going to need for your average day hike. So I'll tell you, there was one other feature about this pack that I didn't even know existed when I bought it. And to be completely honest, I was thrilled when I discovered it. Because this changes it from being just a good day pack to being a great everyday pack. And what I mean by that is, this isn't just used for backpacking anymore. You can use this pack for going to the office, traveling, or anything that you could possibly think of. Simply with this side pocket. You undo it, you look inside, and there is a fantastic laptop storage case. Now, I travel a lot for work and for fun. And I can fit a 15-inch laptop in here with no troubles at all. As a matter of fact, when we traveled to the Philippines earlier this summer, this was my only bag that I carried as my carry-on. So I had a change of clothes, I had my electronics, and all kinds of snacks to keep my five-year-old and I happy for a 17-hour plane ride. It is an amazing bag. But there are definitely some things that I've learned to hate about this pack, too. Last month, I had the pleasure of going up to Canada with my family. We spent a few days in Banff National Park, exploring different waterfalls and amazing hikes, alpine lakes. It was beautiful. And what I discovered on this hike is that after five or six hours, the pack does get a little heavy on your shoulders. I know it's just a day pack, so there isn't a whole lot of support. But one thing that I'd love to see is if they would add in some load lifter straps. Not very common for lightweight packs, I know that. But a load lifter would help just adjust that weight bring it up off your shoulder blades and secure it a little bit better. Another piece that I noticed that I thought I could deal without and I'm realizing I absolutely have to have, I need hip belt pockets. You don't realize how important hip belt pockets are until you have to stop every 15 or 20 minutes and pull out a snack for your five-year-old. The Impassable 20 and the Ditch Rider 32 both are without hip belt pockets. And as crazy as it sounds, Big Agnes doesn't actually offer hip belt pockets sold separately. Now their Prospector 50 comes with removable hip belts, so I know they're making them, but unfortunately they're just not out there on the market for you to purchase. For me, that's almost a deal breaker. I didn't realize how important those hip belt pockets were until I spent a week out there on the trail without them. Aside from hip belt pockets, potentially some load lifters, this is probably the best day pack that I have ever owned. And I absolutely love it. So here's the rub. If you go to the website today for Big Agnes in the United States, you'll see the Impassable 20 isn't even for sale anymore. It is in Europe and it is in Canada, but for some reason, Big Agnes has removed this from their product line in the United States. Now, maybe hip belts were a deal breaker for more than just me, I don't know. But for some reason, Big Agnes has discontinued the Impassable 20 on their product line. If you're lucky enough to get a hold of one, I highly recommend you give it a shot. If not, now well, maybe we have to size up to the Ditch Rider 32. But for me personally, I think I'm going to have to invest in a fanny pack. <laughs> if you found this information useful or even slightly interesting, I hope you consider leaving a like, maybe hitting that subscribe button. If you're interested in some more gear-related videos, you check out the link right up here.